Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. Well I thought I'd just quickly share with you how I string my onions. So basically the first onion gets the knot tied at the bottom. Basically the best ones, so the best ones stay at the bottom. And all I do is grab the onion, move it through like that, over the top and back down. What could be simpler? I've watched other people uh, do such uh, complicated things that uh, it's just uh, just a little bit uh, beyond me and we just keep stacking them up find a space uh, use it as like, like we always say on our allotments so I'll uh, finish those off later on and we're going to have a little look around now the progress that I've made in uh, August I'm not going to talk about the rats they're really uh, really nibbling away at everything but we must focus on uh, the good things yeah, there's too much going on in the world to worry about uh, a few uh, rats pinching a few of my carrots and uh, other vegetables. But anyway, let's go and have a little look around and uh, please stay with me to the end if you can. Well, this is the uh, polytunnel build. Uh, we raised it up by that much and I'm really pleased, absolutely pleased as I could ever be. Uh, everything's growing. I've had the best uh, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, the strawberries did well. No, can't, can't be uh, any pleased with uh, everything that uh, uh, we've got, especially these um, yellow pear tomatoes. The, uh, come on, I've got to look where my feet are. The, the granddaughter's absolutely uh, loving those. And anyone that may have sent me a Gmail, uh, it is back up and running now. So if you haven't had a reply from me, please send your email again. I do apologize about that, but me being not very technical, I haven't been clearing out uh, some of the old emails. Uh, so uh, I got blocked. But these are the peppers that I got from work. They were a really nice red long pepper and basically they grew exactly the same. So I'm pleased with those. We're taking some green and we'll wait to see if uh, some of them uh, go uh, red. As we look at the orange banana. Very, very tasty tomatoes indeed. A massive success this time was the onion sets, a stir on, and the others that we did grow. Uh, these are the ones from out of the giant cabbage cage. They stayed a lot longer. So if I do sets in the future, I will plant them in the spring and not the autumn. Uh, the only ones that did go uh, to seed were some of the red barons, I'll show you them shortly, but very, very few. And that's, uh, that's a mushroom, so we must be doing something right. So those are the, uh, the red baron, and again, we've got the best one at the bottom. These are the ones that didn't go to seed, because as they go to seed, I eat them. And uh, they're really quite nice. I've got some peas here that the mice uh, didn't pinch. And then we've got uh, all the onions. We'll do a separate video on this. The uh, heads started to fall off these. So I've uh, put them in these uh, uh, wool bags that uh, the wife gets when she orders her wool. And uh, there's the rest of the garlic and everything else. Uh, we'll uh, we'll do a little reveal on that, especially the upside down bulb challenge. See how the cloves formed? Uh, I'm going to reveal those. Someone put some more of uh, these uh, cell trays out, and I like to get them when there's quite a few exactly the same. So I'll probably put those to good use. Uh, this is the lettuce that you will see in uh, and my next video. Sometimes I have to do the videos. Uh, in different orders but we'll get uh, those planted here this is where the walking onions were and uh, the opria so we'll find a space uh, we'll fill it well you've seen these lettuce in the lampshades and we've planted three rows of radish at the back now that we've got rid of the uh, seed heads off the onions uh, 
I don't normally plant them this deep but you'll see shortly where this uh, compost has come from but uh, I do uh, like to grow them in here it uh, just keep them uh, a little bit cleaner especially when the rain falls on them we don't get that horrible dirt splash all over the lettuce the second main sowing of the pongos doing well and I do need to get the strawberries out they're just changing colour I've tried feeding them but uh, they're getting really pot bound now we've taken a few more carrots out before our friends got to them and uh, they were very nice so this is the front of the polytunnel uh, in last year or before we'd done the polytunnel, the water used to flow this way into barrels in, buried in the ground. So that means I used to bucket it out or pump it out. So now it goes the other way. Uh, that barrel's full, that one's full. So this will be the gravity fed. This will just be basically a stand. That water won't probably ever get used unless I get really desperate. And we've got the tap facing that way and then we can get it through to there and into here whatever I decide to do um, I like to put everything on slabs if I can not wood so that we never have to touch them again this one's full and uh, I'm going to uh, pump the water across we're about there on this so it's about 500 litres in there so we can pump that across into here and you've already seen all the barrels to there and uh, I've got a little space here so I've moved this over a touch to accommodate uh, another barrel so that's another 200 litres and we can still then fetch from uh, this one and lots of been, people have been asking how I join all the barrels together and I'll put the video playlist uh, at the end on the end screen but uh, all this is working out really well and we'll have a little look at what we've done at the other end so just to recap I was only going to have three square foot gardening beds and then create one of these beds here to replace this temporary one because we hadn't got enough scaffold planks I'm going to get rid of these so to get rid of those as I've just turned around I was going to get them to be put here but of course I've created myself a little bit of work but I've already uh, emptied uh, the one pallet collar now there's one two three four five six seven eight there and that was half full so basically it's 16 bags of compost soil material in a four pallet collar raised bed and it all goes right to the bottom and uh, you may even be able to see the holes that I made for the uh, parsnips with the uh, crowbar like I've done there so we'll be moving sorry guys I'll be moving that pallet collar bed up to there so we've now lowered the two that we've got here still gives me room to get round there so I can come up here for water and I can come up from left to right when that bed has been moved this way it's a bit of a I'm going to say the words but it's it's extra work but at the end of the day if I can keep all the water flowing I haven't got to mess with it easy to collect easy to walk down uh, part of the allotment it's going to be well worth the effort while I am able so the compost you saw where we've planted the radishes came out of the top and then we've worked our way down in layers until we got to the layer where we've got the uh, manure and uh, that is now breaking up uh, nicely difficult to get the light you can probably see it better than I can through the screen but I'll put that through the sieve and some of the material with the manure in I can put in some of the other beds to top them up uh, just depending on where I put my carrot so basically towards the bottom is this stuff here but I will this time dig this bit over a little bit because it takes a little bit of getting the crow because that probably has never been dug probably just virgin soil won't be long before we do a parsnip reveal 
these beds have been topped up covered with car cardboard because we don't want to lose any nutrients uh, or moisture so basically the cardboard will let the moisture flow to each side uh, I've redone the sides of the plastic I was going to reuse this plastic out the bed that we've dismantled but uh, it's got several holes in I'm going to use fresh and use this for on the floor to mix my uh, compost uh, it looks like uh, we've had a little visit there by my condor potatoes and uh, looks like they've uh, taken uh, all the snacks please don't eat my biggest condor potato that I want for Malden, Malvern this is my permanent potato bed we planted these in the autumn and they uh, we mulched them covered them up protected them from the cold and then they come up in the spring we were lucky didn't get frosted and uh, we're harvesting all the different potatoes from that area and as soon as we start working in I can start moving the soil to areas that uh, of the other beds that have now sunk these beds were started in January 20 yes January 2020 and of course they've settled and we use loads and loads of organic materials to top them up all for free I managed to get these piece supports in they're looking a lot better than the ones without support um, we'll just let them go now we'll just let them uh, crack on and those lettuces there they're also doing very well tidied this bed up this side these are old raspberry canes these are about three years old they're autumn raspberry canes and they're still reasonably good obviously they're going to go rotten in the ground but I might be able to get another year out of those but the uh, beans are doing really well lots of uh, lots to harvest and lots to share with the family these are radishes these are the ones I've let go to seed uh, sparkler threes and we're getting some lovely uh, seed pods on these now uh, basically you get more seed pods out of uh, the radish this way and they're quite strong uh, so let's have a little excuse me very nice and a great addition oh the heat's just kicking in a nice addition to my lunchbox with a successional sowing of radishes I must get these carrots out uh, the, the uh, my little friends haven't found them yet just to give uh, the uh, lettuce a little bit more light the successional sowing of Christmas potatoes oh, just, I don't think I've ever taken any of these home just can't uh, can't resist it excuse me that one's gone to seed so we'll see if we can save seed off uh, that variety I did say to myself I'll stick to one yellow and one green uh, the courgette zucchinis but of course you always want that back up and uh, I can't believe how many courgettes I've been getting off these plants oh there's one that's uh, took over but yes it might seem a waste but they make great good great compost and by the time I've took that one off even more grow it's been so productive because I've been taking them off uh, so so small and they're much tastier not sure what you can see down there oh I don't think that was a mouse but uh, he's running around my feet at the moment uh, summer fruit in raspberries that we all cleared up uh, look at the extra growth that uh, these are putting on now from uh, the sides I need to take uh, stop these from running through the roof but the weather has been very kind and giving us uh, a little bit of moisture but all the fruit in here bar from the blueberries has now uh, finished the blueberries are really struggling to uh, ripen in this horrible cold August month wet damp 
But never mind, other things have done well. I found time to get all the uh, weeding done in here. And uh, here's some of the uh, giant uh, cabbages, uh, keeping a close eye on them. And this one is struggling to keep up with uh, all the, uh, the rain that we've had. And it's just started to uh, split a little bit there, but hopefully it won't uh, blow completely. Uh, all the care that we've given the uh, blackberries, uh, they're uh, doing uh, really well. And uh, basically I can't pick them uh, quick enough. But uh, they are... Uh, nice fruit if you leave them too long they go off if you don't pick them if you pick them too early they're a little bit tart as long as i beat the flies excuse me and the raspberries are uh, beautiful again so these had nettle over the winter log ashes and then comfrey as soon as the flowers started to form. Excuse me. I said, excuse me. This rain hasn't <laughs> done anything. Well, it has done it good, but it does bash everything about. This unknown variety of pear, it's supposed to be a conference, but uh, definitely not. Uh, I'm not going to touch that now, but I need to get take that off and take it home out of the way and any other fruit that's rotting. That's a lovely dandelion head there. Let's see if we're going to have the seeds. Let's have them all in uh, one place. I uh, need to clear all this like we have done here and sort some of these trees out and get those uh, strawberries in. We just started to get the... Uh, yellow raspberries uh, in there or the autumn gold i think it is and uh, i'm hoping that that one there's an autumn gold and this one this autumn fruiting do send off the runners don't mind if i get some more fruit like this excuse me so for those that uh, didn't see a previous video we've took the uh, rotten harbour down <clears throat> that will go on to one of the allotments for uh, burning that we've got to clear i've collected the rest of the compost so basically we we've got uh, that full of compost now and uh, like i say it's again it's got um, the uh, perlite in like a lot of the compost that uh, i uh, find or you just get some with the uh, the uh, cocoa coir in Again, I do uh, pick it up if I feel it's uh, good stuff. And uh, uh, these are the conference pears and you can see at the top there, <clears throat> it's already been uh, eaten. And uh, I've already been picking up apples that people have been putting outside their properties, windfalls. So I might get rid of quite a few of these trees. They're not productive enough. So this is a, another find uh, uh, this week. And uh, again, it's got the, uh, the perlite in and the compost looks uh, like it's got a bit of everything in. But you can see they've uh, potted them up, but the roots have never got out of this container into there. So these are 30 litre containers, so there's at least 25 litres in each of those. So we've got about 250, 270 litres of compost there, all for free. I've decided to keep this wheelbarrow because it's quite narrow, a lot narrower than that to get between the beds on plot three. So I think that one might uh, be disappearing if somebody wants it. Normally swap a wheelbarrow for a couple of bags of compost. A little bit of bartering on the allotments. Quick update on the greenhouse, the, the wick, grit, wick guttering system oh what are you cobwebs he's there every day 
bless him he builds it every night and i have to walk through it i've been trying some of the fruits and the fruits the tomatoes and the cucumbers don't taste the same so the bacteria wilt is definitely affecting the fruits even though uh, they are growing i think they're gonna miss that cucumber far too big but uh We've got some uh, nice things growing here and these are some of those that we got from uh, the seeds from Shed Wars so I'll be saving some seeds from those as well there's some more of the uh, tomato pears and uh, they're just, just they're just not the same as what's in the polytunnel won't be long before we clear this area and uh, start uh, getting the leaf mold all done again bargum that 12 months has gone quite quickly and the uh, lady crystal that i planted on the 12th of the 6th they've got some really big spuds in here and the only reason i'm pulling this one out is because it's uh, had a nibble <laughs> but i'm looking forward to revealing those um, so these are some of the potatoes that we had for free from the garden centre because they were going uh, uh, well out of season so we put them in the fridge and we've been planting them ever since the next potato reveal will be the ones uh, in wood chips the last one was in fresh wood chips this one will be in three-year-old wood chips nothing else just my three-year-old wood chips we get from the bottom of the paths uh, we'll see what uh, see what we get out of those but i will be posting videos uh, quite regularly now on the uh, growing uh, potato medium uh, challenge happy gardening to you all till next time my friends try for now Ooh, I could stop here all day.